Hello AP Statistics students. Sorry I couldn't be here with you today. I am chaperoning a field trip for my daughter. We are at the roller rink right now, so you best believe I am shredding up the lanes. <laughs> All right, let's do this. We got to talk a little bit more about uh, bias. So I'm going to give you some examples about how to describe bias. All right, we learned kind of what it was yesterday, but what do you actually have to do with it? You have to describe it. All right, we can't just call it out. We have to describe its effects precisely and completely. And so I've got a three step process for you to do that. After my examples, there is a Desmos workbook for you to work through, all right, where you will be describing some bias. So after the video, go take a look at that. Read the, uh, the comic. This is a pretty good one. Have you ever been killed by a poorly designed product? <laughs> no? That's a pretty good one. For an extra $50,000, I could call a second person. I don't want to jinx it. It's a good one. All right. Sorry. Bias. So if you're going to describe bias, your sentence or sentences need to cover three things. All right. First, call out the type of BS. All right. Is it a convenient sample? Voluntary response, undercoverage, non-response, response, bias. Which one are we talking about here? Okay. Then, second sentence, pick whether this would lead to an overestimate or underestimate of the statistic. You can't just say it's wrong. You have to say what it will do. All right. Are we going to overestimate the proportion of people that say something or are we going to underestimate? Then you got to justify that pick. All right. Explain or give a reason how this would lead to an overestimate or underestimate. Why would these certain people say something this way? Why would we miss a certain opinion? All right. So let me give you a couple examples and then you can try it on your own. So remember how the poll from the rideshare company that was emailed to members of the blog newsletter, all right? And people chose to click on it or not, right? They got it in their email, which was a whole different issue, but then they chose to click on it or not. And that means this is a voluntary response sample. People are choosing to be in it, all right? That's our issue. So. The problem with this poll is that it uses a voluntary response sample. All right, so I called out the BS. It's a voluntary response sample. So what? What do we think that would do? Well, I personally think that would uh, increase the proportion of people that say yes on this Proposition 22. This will lead to an overestimation of the proportion of people who support Prop 22. This is the sentence most people, I think, get stuck on. Pick one. All right. Is it going to be an overestimate or an underestimate? Do you think the number is going to be too big because of it? More people will say yes. Or do you think more people will say no? Pick one and justify it. More often than not, you can justify both sides of these. And that's not really what you are going to be graded or penalized on. It's just can you pick one and justify it somehow? OK. So I'm going to go with over. I think more people will say yes. Um, they will. More people will support Prop 22. All right. That was step two right there. That was step two. I picked whether it be an overestimate or an underestimate. Step three. Now I have to explain a reason why this voluntary response, this self-selection, would lead to that overestimate. I have to justify it. Why do I think more people would say yes? All right, I'll just put a because instead of a second sentence. Because uh, the people who self-select 
to click on the email will probably be more passionate about keeping rideshare apps the same, which leads to supporting Prop 22. All right, I made a justification there why I thought more people would say yes and why those people would then click on that more than others, okay? More passionate people are more likely to click and more passionate people are more likely to support Prop 22. That would cause an overestimation. All right, so I hit those three points and connected them all. That's what you got to do for bias, okay? That three-step process, give me three sentences, two sentences, and a because, whatever it takes. All right, I want you to try one more. Pause the video for this one. All right, this is a good one here. Here is a, a student poll, not here at uh, Edison, but somewhere else. Do you like the teachers at this high school? So here's the responses when a student asked. It was like 50-50. Here are the responses when a teacher asked, do you like the teachers? All right, give the video a pause. See if you can identify the bias here and its effects with that three-step process. Pause it up. All right, my turn. So this is a response bias, all right? A teacher asking if you like the teachers is definitely going to influence students' response. So this is a response bias. This is a response bias because a teacher asking if students like the teachers will influence the responses. All right, now here you get a little bit lucky because you see that it was definitely an overestimation, right? It blew out of the water. We now, we kind of know the second one. This will lead to an overestimation of the proportion of students that say they like the teachers. All right, now why? Would that happen? Now, I kind of talked about this in the first sentence a little bit, but I have to connect it even more obviously, okay? Make that direct connection so obvious that uh, there's no question, all right? So, because a student will be uh, more likely to say they like their teachers when a teacher is standing right in front of them. All right, if you're more likely to say you like the teachers, that will lead to an overestimation. I know it feels like you said that twice. Roll with it, because they are. there's some slight differences between the two ways we're saying it. You gotta do those three steps, all right? So hopefully that helps get you some sentences going. I don't really have a sentence frame here, but you got to follow that three-step procedure. So head on over to the Desmos now. I've got a couple more examples for you to pick out the bias and then write a sentence like this. Good luck, and I'll see you Friday.